important era in uh, BMX media history. All right, let's not include that. All right. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> for the record, I have John Pova of Fly BMX. What's your official title? Um, team manager and market manager. And then we have Devin Smiley, newly appointed uh, pro team rider, and Kevin Porter. How long have you been on the fly team? Ten years? I think it's been eight, actually. Maybe nine. So at this point in the, in the brand's history, what, what is Fly all about? What does Fly uh, exist as? It's a frame company, it's a parts company, but what, what does Fly stand for in terms of uh, the BMX industry, you think? It has pretty good roots, and uh, originally it was like, you know, we made everything. Like, well, Fly made everything, but we've been trying to like diversify a little bit with, you know, having guys like Matt Rowe on pass, but yeah, he still writes with Muni frames, and, and it, I guess Ruben was the originator of right. T1, and, but a lot, a lot of guys view, you know, um, Fly is making everything, I guess, but um, just an innovative brand that makes cool stuff and almost comes from an artistic kind of standpoint. And uh, so going into 2013, what are the products that you guys are excited about that you have coming out? Um, well, Shane Weston has a frame that is coming out. Um, it's pretty badass. There's some other stuff. I mean, a lot of new colors of frames, like new colors of Kevin's frame. There's, we have this awesome new color that's like a stainless, like a refrigerated kind of stainless bars. All the bars are coming in that color. Forks, cranks. Um, there's some new brakes in the works that are pretty kind of sp springless brakes. It's pretty sweet to have that stainless because chromoly is like real popular right now. So it's kind of bad for the environment. Having the stainless stuff is like a little bit better. I, I feel like it's just, it's smarter, you know. It's cool because it's it's like polished, so it has that extra little thing to it. And so th there's been some additions to the Fly team within the past year. Uh, Devin, you're you're the new guy on the team. You and Shane, who's uh, actually on the other side of the camera. But uh, Pova, was that was that your doing? Did you uh, see these guys as kind of dudes that you thought could? Uh... Well, yeah, I mean, Shane was kind of before I got there, but he was someone I, I thought that would be good for the brand, like. David, who owns Fly, he's just, you know, super communicative and, you know, he was just looking for new dudes in the U.S. So, Fly's always had that kind of styly slasher kind of surfer kind of vibe and, I, you know, he was trying to make moves in the, in the States and, and he was look I, I mean, in my eyes, you know, streets what sells. Mm -hmm. So, I, I figure Shane was a good addition. I mean, he's got his own thing going on, he's got his own style and he, just, he keeps good company. Like. Corey and Nathan and, and like just you can get good, along with everybody yeah but you, if you're in good company it's, it, it's also a good selling point you know? unlike Devin who actually has horrible social skills <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we really all hate hanging out with him he's a real mean guy yeah. And, then, yeah. and then him he's yeah. I don't know, man, like, well I figured Devin's got something going on too so I thought it was kind of cool it was cool because like Shane like you said is very innovative and we did want to get back into like what everybody else is kind of into the street you know like, I think like the slasher thing got down to like a small market but then you got Shane who kind of mended the world for us and then we pulled Devin on who's like on the other side of someone like me you know see that was always kind of the interesting thing to me about fly as a brand is maybe 2000 like the early 2000s everybody in New York City had a fly and I remember always thinking like it's, it's really kind of interesting because there wasn't anybody on the fly team besides maybe Tyrone yeah. who who had really any relationship to that sort of like raw like street style riding so but I, I do think it's cool like to just see the, the team be a little bit more balanced a little bit more uh, you know relating to what's going on right now and everything you know you know what else happens usually when when you have a team like that like we did start out like we had like Tyrone we had David Stroud back in the day biz, yeah we had biz they were really street oriented but we went on all these really epic trips and when you go on those trips the team kind of forms this this right. bond and then that bond turns into like your style right so we all ride really similar because we've shared so much time together in these epic places so like that's why you <coughs> see me and Stefan Kevin we all kind of in Sergio and Ruben we all share that like really bowl riding slasher unique street course or unique street spot it's cool hearing you articulate that that yeah. style of riding because that's what I think people associate fly with but it's kind of hard to put it into terms like exactly what you would call that yeah it's weird because that's the way I am you know I'll always be like that and and I watch Devin and I'm like super excited it makes me want to go do that right so putting someone like Devin on a team it's like another 
it's another way to form into that world too, you know? Because, yeah, but you're, you've always been super tech as well as like, it seems like for a, for a period of time you were doing like the, the bull riding type thing, but yeah. you were like back in the day, you were ridiculously tech, like in the, yeah. when you first came out and stuff, you, you probably have a few tech combos you might not be super proud of <laughs> yeah. now, right? <laughs> I can see the look what in your it, eyes. What is it, uh, hopscotch or whatever? <laughs> still bustles. Yeah. But well, you're, are, you're not completely proud of the, the kick flip to pedal grind to switch foot to pedal grind to 180. <laughs> no, of man. course I am, man. Expendable so, three, dude. Yeah, I, was, I, I grew up on that, dude. I yeah, was, I'm, I'm I different, you know. Step. Like I always, that's a phase. Yeah. I always yeah, wanted yeah. to do something different than what everybody else was doing because I felt like that doesn't involve the sport if everybody's doing the same exact thing. Right. It's like the same Smith grind to 180, and right. who does it? How they do it? What if somebody throws some other twist on it, and then that causes that average riding to blow up and do a bigger, like. We just turn into more creative things, you know? I, I probably should have covered this in the beginning, but Pova, how did you uh, end up taking on the team manager job? I assume you're already pretty busy with the uh, the whole Edney's gig. Yeah, I mean, I already had like a relationship with everybody from Sergio to Ruben and, and David and that, but, you know, David, uh, I don't know, I guess he felt that I might fit the bill. So he just approached me and it was kind of a tough thing. Like, at first, I wasn't sure I was going to be able to do it just because I felt like, Etnies wouldn't be into it, but I talked to them and they they were cool with it. It's good to hear. Um, yeah, what? Uh, so Fly is always kind of recognized as a brand that is all about innovation, you know, from a technical standpoint and stuff. What do, What do you feel are the areas that there are rooms for improvement in the BMX world, like just in terms of things that can be improved upon upon our bikes? Because I think we all think the same thing is our bikes are all pretty pretty great, and it's hard to think of things that could really make it that much better. It's not like 2001 when everybody was putting out stems that were 10 ounces lighter and stuff like that but mm -hmm. you know do you think there's still room to improve absolutely i think that we're going to continue to improve like we've made like huge strides in the last five years mm -hmm. and like that's one of the reasons i started riding for flies because i was so insanely obsessed with david's style of creating parts it was better than everybody else that i've seen out there not to brag or anything i wasn't meaning that but like I don't think that that's going to stop. There's always something to You just keep on. thinking, you know, and I think now you have people like Devin doing more street riding stuff, so now David's probably going to be thinking more strength and stuff like that, which could, you know, could definitely make that work. What, uh, when you guys are walking around air bike, uh, how do you feel about the overall, like, current health of the industry? Like, uh, does it seem like things are going great or are things kind of... I don't know, man. The way I look at it is smaller and smaller every year well the booth and the number of booths yeah. of course yeah i think like as a whole like i work for quentin as well and i right. think looking at it from an apparel point of view and from outside aspects everybody's really into bmx but our actual industry is like it's lacking like support like we're we can't afford to get all these little parts out there so now complete bikes are the focus so it's weird it's like going through some weird transition i feel like right I don't know. I think, uh, I mean, I know the BMX is doing good. Yeah. I mean, this is my first time in a bike. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, you know, <laughs> I don't know. It's pretty cool. I mean, this is my 12th just, year. I'm meeting a lot of new people, and it's just cool seeing new product and stuff. I think yeah. it's. I think it looks like it's doing good to me. Like, I think from an outside perspective, if you didn't know BMX, I think you'd think it was pretty small. Right. But we know it's doing well. It's just these brands that can't afford to be here. It's a huge, huge financial commitment <clears> to <throat> have a booth I mean not just a booth but you got to do like flights and hotels and cars and food it's like it adds up so I just think uh, I mean yeah if you look at in a bike you think BMX is not so healthy but I think it's doing good you know? do you think inner bike still matters for a brand like fly like uh, are you guys actually doing a, a crucial amount of networking here and everything or it's weird is I, it kind of just for, for I fun? feel like the internet the internet's taken away a lot of the like what Interbike was all about. Unbalanced you could do it. Yeah. You could do it all on the internet, and now people are like, "Man, I don't know if it's worth it for us to walk around and talk to people when we can just email." And well, when you have to spend twenty grand or whatever yeah. for a booth, yeah. I think they should be adjusting with that too. But I also think I also think like um, it's important to have a presence. Yeah. But whereas, like Kevin was saying, like the internet nowadays, like more people are coming in to view the product and they want to order later on. Whereas before, in a bike was about coming here and putting orders. Yeah. Right. But still, if, if it's kind of out of sight, out of mind, if you're not here, it's kind of... Um, 
yeah. especially for a brand the size or the potential size of Fly, if, if you're not having a presence, you know, you're kind of taking a back seat to some of the brands that are. I agree with that. Has Fly kind of uh, taken a hit in terms of like US promotion with System Cycle, uh, that relationship shit in the bed and them not being around anymore? Or is, is there still a strong US presence in terms of shops and everything? Who's the US distributor now? Quality Quality oh, okay. So, still got a, a big name behind you, but uh, do, you, do you feel like the, the shop presence is just as strong as ever? Yeah, I mean, we're in quality, and pretty much anybody who knows what Fly is knows that that's where it's at, so it's there. I don't think... We obviously want to work on bigger things, and, and you know, it's tough sometimes competing with a lot of other brands under the same roof, but I think, um, you know, having new dudes on the team, you know, De Devin, Shane, uh, Matt Rowe, and you know, just our presence in general is going to draw attention to the brand and hopefully, yeah. you know, people are going to like request it more and hopefully that trans translates to sales, you know. In terms of what you guys do with your promotional budget, uh, do, you, do you guys still do print ads? Do you guys just do a lot of online stuff or is most of the stuff just go towards like web videos and stuff along those lines? Uh, a little combo of both, like a little bit of dig, <coughs> see what come up. Um, you know, it's just... For me, it was just the, the, the brands that I saw value in, you know? Online, you see, you know, you, it's undeniable the eyes that I see in a brand, like, mm -hmm. you know, with a magazine, it's a fixed set of eyes, and it's, that's the channel, you know? Um, but I see value in that, too. But you can't deny the amount of eyes that are seeing something on the internet. And to me, you know, if it's in your face, then, you know, it's something you can't, you can't deny and you can't ignore it. And at the end of the day, you know, the, the product obviously stands on its own, but it's just about letting people know about yeah, yeah. everything like that. I think, I think one of the things that really makes it hard for us to grow and to be a part of the American thing is that we're a European brand. Yeah. And it has such a lock in this country, but yeah. the way we want to kind of react with that is to support people like Devin and Shane, who are amazing people and do a great job at parks and like awesome with kids. But do you feel like Fly really gets that, like, European foreign stigma because I feel like they, the Fly has probably made better inroads than the, the vast majority of European brands in terms of like developing a presence and everything like that. Yeah, I think we've always been on the better side of it, but it is kind of hard to see like other European brands struggle so much here. Right. And like, yeah. it does affect us for sure. What what happens a lot of times is is if you, if you look at distri uh, distributors like in, in Europe and that they seem if you're an American brand, you already have a status. So that and and because they're distributing the brand, they understand they have to promote it. And because obviously you can't be, every, like a brand can't be everywhere all the time. But it kind of doesn't trans like translate the other way. You're, you're, it seems like you're kind of left to your own devices to promote your brand when you're in the US if you're coming from Europe right. or Australia or anything. Because if you really kind of sit there and analyze it, a lot of those brands outside the US have a hard time in the States. Mm -hmm. Unless you're like here to, to commit yourself to your own promotion. It's like, yeah, like some of our competitors, you know. Huh. Very interesting. Um, oh well, KP, you just made the move uh, out of Long Beach to Chicago. Can you tell us why you've chosen to abandon all of us? <laughs> I didn't abandon you guys. I uh, still love you. Yeah. I actually, it's hard to to be out of the beautiful California weather, but I got a really cool job, basically visiting coffee shops. So I went from doing what I always do is ride bikes, I'm always gonna do that. I had that as a job, and now I drink coffee also as a job, so it's like... How many cups a day? I only drink two. Oh, but I'm like super passionate, I dork out about it, so... The, the guys who offered me a job were like, come come here, you can ride for us, we want you to stay bike riding, we're gonna push you to do bike riding because it helps their marketing. Yeah. And then, basically I just work on coffee all day, and then I work on bikes all night. It's perfect. It's like all day fun. <laughs> so Very nice. You can't turn that down. No, yeah. You know, yeah. like California or two dream jobs. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, Devin, what do you, you got anything in the works? You been filming for anything we should know about? Or? Uh, I've been working on something for the end of the year. Uh, got a little bit of footage stacked up. See, that's the difference between KP 
who's almost 10 years older than you, is that he's excited to have two jobs, and you seem genuinely <laughs> excited to have no, no job. job. <laughs> yeah. I, I love doing what I'm doing, man. Like, honestly, <clears throat> being out in California and just being able to ride, like, whenever you want and get to go, like, I ride new spots all the time. It's, it's seriously a dream come true. Like, but, you know, it comes with price or whatever. You got to leave home and stuff, so it's like leaving everything behind. But Is it tough still for you dealing with that, not being at home? <laughs> It has its moments or whatever, but for the most part, like, I'm doing everything that I want to do. Did like, you leave I'm home fine. on your own terms, or did you, uh, did you get the boot? Uh, I kind of... <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard about this. I think you told me the story where I drove it, it, was, uh, it involved me having to pay rent when I turned 18. Right. So it was one of those things where, like, I came up in a situation where I had a friend that was like, yeah, come stay with me. And at first you were living with a crew of, of like, five girls, right? <laughs> oh, it was this one girl I was staying with, and then she introduced me to this other girl, and then we all moved out of California together, and then that didn't work out, and now it's all, I'm on my own doing Who do you live with now? Uh, I live with Brandon Meads. Oh, okay. That's awesome. So. Because I remember one time we had an experience where we were riding to school in Huntington Beach, and, uh, you know, Dakota just rolls up, and we were like, man, that's funny, Dakota's here, and then all of a sudden I just see you on a skateboard just rolling up, and I'm just like... Man, this is fucked. There's, there's too many good-ass yeah. bike riders around. I used to live, like, right there on, uh, like, 15th, like, two blocks in from the beach, but ended up moving into a different apartment, like, past month, so. <laughs> so awesome. It's been good, man. It's awesome living out there, for sure. Do you, do you feel like hanging out with these two uh, puts you up on some game? Like, you're, you're kind of learning the ropes, so maybe you won't have to I'm, make all the same mistakes. So. <laughs> I, give, I give him plenty of shit. Yeah. <laughs> when, when, when he fucks up, I let him know. Yeah. You know what's pretty awesome, too? I can... You, you said that he was skateboarding. Yeah. That's one That's one of the things that I've always had in my mind is to get rid of the skateboard bike riding tension. I know it's like almost impossible, but as we grow older as a sport, the two worlds get closer and closer to each other. And seeing people like him who can shred a board and ride a bike is it's a beautiful thing. And to have him a part of our company is like, is magic to me almost, you know? It's something I've always wanted. I, I actually... Did, I was at X Games doing these demos, and I invited him to come, to come ride. He brought a skateboard, <laughs> yeah. and all the pro skateboarders, who is this dude? I was like, actually, he's a pro bike rider. Yeah, because I've seen that at the skate park, too, where he'll, be, he'll do something crazy, and a bunch of skate yeah. kids will be all stuck, from I'm saying, like, if you only knew that... Uh, oh, good, he's a bike, too. <laughs> we went to that unit B park, like, the first time we went there, and, uh, you know, there's a few skaters there, because it's a skateboard, and... Uh, he drops in and rides his bike, does his thing, and there's like probably one, maybe two good skaters in the crew of like five or six. And you know, they, they had no reaction at all to the bike. They were like just too cool for school. Then he just drops his bike, picks up his board, and basically Tricks. destroyed all of them. Like, <laughs> now, they're like, fuck. That's like our little so revenge bummed. right there. <laughs> that's, <laughs> you know, that's something I always it's dreamed like, of. I, I wanted it, to get kicked out. It's like, just, it's, on, like, it's kind of weird, but like, it's cool at the same time because I feel like I can like have a connection with skateboarders too like I've grown up doing both like the same amount of years pretty much and like I've like I definitely have more of a passion for BMX but I love skateboarding you know? what's your best like, trick on flat ground on a skateboard <laughs> yeah uh, that's funny uh I mean being give us some nolly flips got tray flips pretty consistent <laughs> got hard flips so awesome uh I landed a few nolly tray flips who's recently. the best pro BMX or skateboarder uh you guys probably wouldn't know this but Garrett <laughs> Garrett Reynolds? Yeah. yeah. Really? He's, he's amazing. Wow. Dude, so good. I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not really surprised. I'm, but. I'm, really, I'm really into Cody. <laughs> I like... Um, Cody's really good, like, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cody shreds, dude. Me and him, we'll go, like, He goes skate. to Rose. Like, we'll at least have, like, one session a week or something. We'll just meet up at, like, Balkan Park or something and go shred. Anything, any last words about uh, Fly? Where, where, where can we check it out on the web? What's the URL? Flybikes.com? Yep. Mm -hmm. And, uh... Follow us on Twitter. QBMX. Fly bikes BMX on Twitter, Instagram. Instagram. Devin Smiley. That's what's hot now. Yeah, at Devin Smiley. Hit him up. Salty bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Salty bastard. Yeah, underscore in between that. Don't forget. Okay, just in case the kids don't know but who that is, that everybody in the BMX industry is having conversations with. They might not know, but and Tierra KP. Yes, yeah. Tierra KP. Beautiful.